Tonight, an unprecedented outage of IT systems causes a global computer shutdown, bringing services and major organisations to a standstill. Good evening, Jeremy Fernandez with a special edition of ABC News. As we go to where tonight, companies, small organisations and government agencies worldwide are dealing with a massive computer glitch that's affecting banking, airline, telecommunications, retail, health and many other services. The cyber security company at the centre of the outage says it's now identified the problem and is deploying a solution. However, the government's Home Affairs and Cyber Security Infrastructure Security Centre says it could be several hours or days before the situation is fully resolved. The outage began about 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. in WA, when computer screens worldwide went blank. Flights have been grounded, payment systems taken offline and services cancelled. We here at the ABC are also operating at reduced capacity, like many other organisations. We've got reporters standing by with live updates on events as they unfold tonight. We'll get more on the cause of this outage in a moment, but first let's begin with the massive disruption that's taking place tonight. Ethan Ricks is standing by at Sydney Airport. Ethan, how are things looking there tonight? Well, Jeremy, it's clear that the impact of this uh, outage is affecting all states across the country at the moment. We've seen check-in systems in Canberra, in the Gold Coast, in Brisbane, uh, in Melbourne, in Cairns, in Adelaide, in Perth and, of course, here in Sydney have been affected by this uh, outage so far. We know so far that at least a dozen flights have been cancelled and those passengers have been sent home and we're told they will receive a a full refund for their flights and it seems that things have started to come back online for only some airlines. We received a statement from Virgin Australia who says their systems are now stable and it's clear their lines are moving a lot quicker but just behind me you can see there is a long queues persisting and that's at the Jetstar check-in. We just heard over the PA a second ago their systems remain offline and while some of their flights could still be taking off tonight they're not sure they're going to be able to get people on board those flights because they can't actually check any of their baggages in at the moment so clearly still some issues persisting. Many of the people we spoke to here tonight have been waiting for more than four hours. They're saying they're frustrated with the lack of communication and not knowing whether or not they'll be able to fly out tonight. Ethan, how is it affecting flights nationally and what should people who are planning to travel tonight or tomorrow do now? Yeah, that's a good question. The best thing you can do is look up online and try and stay up to date as quickly as possible and make sure you look up your specific airline as well because clearly, as we're seeing tonight, some of those issues are being felt differently across the different airlines. If you came here tonight and you're on a Virgin flight, you'd get straight through. But if you're on a Jetstar flight, it could take you a long while and I would say expect delays because you might not get through. If you are flying tomorrow, of course, try and stay updated. This is an evolving situation. We still don't know when some of these systems are going to come back online. So try and stay up to date and possibly look up before you come to your airport to try and catch your flight. Ethan Ricks reporting from Sydney Airport. Thank you. Let's bring in David Webber at Perth's Langley Park. Dave, what's been the impact there in WA? Well, Jeremy, it's mainly those big corporations that also have a presence in WA that have been affected, whether it's Coles, Kmart, Telstra, uh, Woolworths as well, the self-service checkouts. But as we were there earlier today, we saw that some of them were working. So people still being able to go about their daily business, except at the airport where two flights were, were cancelled that we know of. Jetstar flights are referred to the cancellation being cancellations being required as part of the global systems outage. A lot of frustrated people out there. There were warnings that people had to arrive uh, earlier because there were going to be lines for manual check-in. We've been told just a short time ago that things are getting back to normal at Perth Airport. Some government agencies have been affected. Uh, they were still trying to work out the extent to which the, the, the impact had been, been felt. Uh, there was also a, a release from St John WA Health Centres, including Urgent Care, saying that they were impacted and they asked people to be patient while waiting for the systems to come back online. And, uh, yeah, multiple state government departments, but, but critical services were still operating and, crucially, triple O services were OK. Some of the smaller retailers, I mean, we were in the city before just going around and, and asking people how they were going with it. A lot of people didn't know that this had happened. There were people lining up at the banks, getting some money out of the, the cash machines. 
but uh, the CBD, CBD itself just seemed to be running as normal. There were some shops that said had signs saying that they were closed due to unforeseen circumstances, but without being able to talk to anybody inside, we don't know why they were closed. And that was the same with some of the shops out in the malls. Uh, the Maritime Museum uh, apparently had, had some problems, but uh, we're hoping that things will be getting back to, to normal soon. However, as we're finding out, hour by hour, we're finding out about more businesses and companies and agencies that have been affected that we didn't know about before. David Weber at Langley Park in Perth. Thank you. Let's go to Parliament House in Canberra now, where political reporter Nicole Hegarty has been following today's developments. Nicole, the government has held an emergency meeting in response to this outage. What have they had to say about this crash? Hi, Jeremy. That's right. This meeting started some three hours ago and finished over an hour ago now. Uh, we saw, following on from that, a statement uh, from the Home Affairs Minister, Claire O'Neill, who said what's called this National Coordinating Mechanism had met, and that is a way of uh, coordinating, as the name suggests, the response to matters such as this, not that they've dealt with something of this scale before in terms of uh, the impact across the country. Uh, we heard that Crowd, Crowd Strike, the company uh, responsible for this outage, uh, were represented at this meeting and that they said that they were working on a fix, but it could take some time uh, to be implemented across the board due to the unprecedented scale of this. Uh, in response to that, we uh, have seen reassurance from the government uh, telling people not to panic, that this was not a cyber security incident, but rather driven by a software update issue uh, that relating to that CrowdStrike software. Uh, and the government really trying to reassure people that they are onto this, they are going through the process and working to resolve it as quickly as possible. The Prime Minister issued a statement earlier today saying that he understood the concern uh, that the public and, and businesses across the board were feeling as a result of this uh, and uh, that they will continue to update the public as inf further information comes to hand as well, Jeremy. It brought Friday to a grinding halt at work for a lot of people. How widespread is this issue? Well, that's right. It certainly did. And uh, we're here in, a, in the Parliament House Bureau first noticed that uh, what's now probably a more commonly known than it was before, the blue screen of death, the little sad face on our computers. Uh, and we looked at each other and then realised just how broad a scale it was when we talked to our colleagues from other media networks and then saw the impact across the board in terms of companies, airports, uh, telecommunications services, people not being able to uh, process their groceries through self-serve uh, registers at uh, supermarkets as well. Also, some uh, private hospitals in Queensland had noticed an impact to this, but critically and crucially, as the government's been very keen to make clear, there was no impact to critical infrastructure. So that what that means in terms of Australia is that government services were not affected and people were still able to make triple zero calls with, with no impact on that as a result of what is an unprecedented unprecedented uh, scale in terms of this incident, Jeremy. Nicole Hegarty reporting from Parliament House in Canberra. Well, alongside the chaos caused by this outage is still a great deal of confusion about what technically triggered it in the first place. To bring us up to speed on what we know so far, we're joined by cyber security expert Jamison O'Reilly. Jamison, what can we trace this back to? Yeah, so what we know so far is that CrowdStrike is a uh, security product that works kind of like an antivirus. So they put software on people's computers that protect their computers at some point in time They've released an update because any good security software needs updates to update the signatures. And what's happened is that's caused a crash on Windows devices. Uh, how widespread is this? Because it seems to be unprecedented globally. Yeah, you know, there's been some figures thrown around. And if you look at uh, CrowdStrike's purported customer base, they, they claim to have around 29,000 customers across the globe. Um, even if you average each customer at having 1,000 devices each, that's a lot of computers, up to 29 million, that will need to be resolved manually going to these machines and actually um, fixing the software glitch. How long is this likely to take to fix? Because the Home Affairs Department security people are saying it could be days or weeks. Yeah, what we know so far about the actual bug or the error is that it does in some cases require physical access to the machine. Um, that causes all these types of logistical problems that could increase the time significantly. 
Is there any increased risk in the meantime to people who are experiencing these computer difficulties? There is indeed, and I think, um, as we've seen in the past, hackers and criminals are opportunistic, and what they will do is definitely take advantage of this incident um, in a number of ways. You know, people are looking for a resolution quickly, and um, it won't surprise me if we see hackers actually try and leverage that and, and send phishing emails. And So what can consumers do in the meantime to look out for that? Yeah, the first thing is, you know, don't remove CrowdStrike altogether. Um, you really need to stay in touch with the people who are providing the software to you and only go on dedicated community channels, um, not just taking advice from social media, for example. All right, Jameson O'Reilly, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, this isn't just a national crisis. The impact of this incident has been felt around the globe. Our South Asia correspondent Meghna Bali is with us now from New Delhi. Meghna, how expansively is this outage being felt there? Yeah, Jeremy, it's been huge here. I'm, I'm in New Delhi today and, of course, our day also started with the blue screen of death uh, with our office manager, but we soon realised this was way more widespread. At least four major domestic airlines here have been impacted, with airports in New Delhi, in uh, Mumbai, around the country being impacted. And just to give you a sense of that, I mean, there's at least a 1,000 flights that come out of New Delhi every day. It's The country's home to more than a billion people. You can only imagine how you know, chaotic and stressful it is to get out of the airport and get through to your flight on a regular basis. Uh, this has just caused a lot of chaos. We're back to manual boarding passes, handwritten airport boards, you know, rubber stamping, security. You can just imagine just how long these processes are taking. Those airlines have gotten in touch with their customers and said if you've got a flight in 24 hours, you need to be prepared for the fact that it could be cancelled or delayed. Um, and so apart from the airline sector, the banking sector has also been impacted without at least uh, you know three to four major banks impacted people not being able to access online banking their apps and, and stuff like that the government's been very quick to sort of come out and point out that government infrastructure hasn't been impacted and that they're in touch with Microsoft and they have deployed a fix are you having have you had a time to get your head around how it's affecting organizations and companies in the rest of Asia yeah, of course. I mean, we're hearing reports in Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, Taiwan, Japan. And, you know, what we're hearing out of these uh, places are mostly airlines. I mean, Jetstar has been impacted and a lot of those domestic uh, Air Asia, those kind of airlines have been impacted. So, you know, we've uh, we've seen a figure uh, in local reporting that I think around a thousand flights have been cancelled. So that's caused chaos. We've also heard reports maybe Japan and, uh, you know, 30 percent of the Macca's McDonald's out there might have been impacted by this. There's been a glitch in their cash register, still trying to confirm it if it is linked to this. But it's been uh, really chaotic and disruptive throughout this region. Meg Bali reporting from New Delhi. Thank you. Our correspondent Michelle Rimmer joins us now from London. Michelle, give us a sense of how things have been affected there in Europe and in the UK. Well, look, this part of the world woke up to news of this global IT outage. So the full impact of these technical issues is still being felt here in the UK. Trains, planes and supermarket checkouts have been affected. Hospitals and GP surgeries are only treating the most urgent cases because they can't access medical records. So they've reverted back to pen and paper to make sure that the most urgent emergency uh, cases can be seen. Uh, the London Stock Exchange has no longer been able to provide its regular news service and Sky News, one of the country's largest rolling broadcasters, was forced off air for a period of time. Now look, in Europe more broadly, uh, in Poland, its largest shipping container terminal said that it's struggling uh, to receive its shipping containers uh, in airports in Spain and Germany. There have been delays. They've had to revert back to manual operations and passengers have been told to arrive hours in advance so they can get through these really slow processes. We're seeing massive queues of people at airports here in the UK, in Europe and also in the US. Uh, the, U the country's uh, main airline carrier, American Airways, uh, they uh, issued a global ground stop notice which meant that no new flights could take off. However, we're hearing that those flights are now starting to resume. So some of the chaos in the United States at least is expected to ease over the coming hours. Again, in Europe, the Paris Olympic Committee has said that it's been 
been impacted by these technical issues. However, they have contingencies in place and even if these issues continue for a number of days, they expect that they will still be ready for the opening ceremony in just a week's time. And again, in Germany, uh, the government has said that its critical operations have been affected. So this is a really broad range of industries and businesses that have been impacted by this technical outage. And we're going to see over the coming hours whether they continue or whether a, a fix is seen and some of these operations can um, get back up again. Michelle Rimmer reporting from Westminster in London.